Let's do a little recap on multiplying with exponents because we're going to need these ideas to deal with factorization. So if we're faced with something like 3x cubed multiplied by 2x squared, the first thing we need to remember is that this is just everything multiplied together, right? This is 3 times x cubed, this is 2 times x squared. So we've just got all these things multiplied together. Now we want to work it out. We're going to say 3 multiplied by 2, that gives me 6. And then we're going to say x cubed multiplied by x squared. And x cubed means you've got 3x's multiplied together. x squared means you've got 2x's multiplied together. So in total, you'll have 5x's multiplied together. So remember, our rule for exponents is if we're multiplying the numbers, we add the exponents. OK, you try this one for yourself. Pause the video and try it. All right, so hopefully you said negative 5 times 7, that gives you negative 35. And x to the 4 times x to the 6, well, you're going to have x to the 4 plus 6, so you're going to have x to the 10. And now we're going to get on to what we really want to do, um, which is what we're going to need when we're getting doing factorization, which is figuring out that missing piece. So we're asking here 3x cubed times by what? is going to get me to negative 18x to the 4. Well, hopefully it's fairly easy for you to see that 3 multiplied by 6 gives you 18, so it's going to be 3 times negative 6, which is going to get you to negative 18. Um, and you could also have just done that by saying negative 18 divided by 3 gives you negative 6. And then if you're going to say x cubed multiplied by what gets you to x to the 4? Well, hopefully that's easy for you to see that it's just x to the power of 1, which we write as x. But if you needed to work it out, you could also have done x to the 4 divided by x to the 3. And so you would get your answer of x to the 1. So the other thing we want to get practice in is finding the highest common factor of two terms. So if we're asked to find the highest common factor of 15p to the 4q9 and 20p to the 7q to the 5, what we're asking is what's the largest thing that can divide into both of these two things? So we're going to deal with it bit by bit. We're first going to deal with the numbers. So Highest common factor of 15 and 20, you should be very good at finding those highest common factors now. You know that that will be 5. And if you don't know how to do that, you need to go and do a recap of finding highest common factor of two numbers. Then if we've got p to the 4 and p to the 7, the highest, the greatest thing that can divide into both of those will be p to the 4. Because you can't make it any more than 4p's because it wouldn't go into p to the 4. And p to the 4 divides into p to the 7 with no problem. What's the highest common factor of q to the 9 and q to the 5? Well, hopefully that's obvious to you. It's q to the 5. 